I have nothing good to say for this intro, so let's just get into it. I think as a Leaf fan, you kind of have to look to the future and say, boy, this is going to be a nice turn of the corner. Let's keep this short and simple. The Leafs lose 2-0 to the Columbus Blue Jackets. I know it's just one game, but it seems like the same thing has been happening over and over again this year. And nothing has changed with this with this pause. You all year you hear uh, Babcock's the problem. Then Sheldon Keefe comes in. We should be better defensively. We should be much better offensively because Dubis has his guy in Sheldon Keefe. Uh, and it's just the same crap, you know. Uh, you hear you hear Kyle Dubis before the NHL resumes saying, "Oh well, the the boys in this locker room they really want to win. They really want to show that they can get past the first round." You know, they've been putting the time, and John Tavares has been a huge leader in the locker room. Where was it? Marner and John Tavares were completely invisible yesterday. Again, I know it's one game. I know it's one game. And for all I know, the Leafs could win three straight, and I'm making a totally, completely different video the next time, the, after this week. But what I saw yesterday, I, I just can't believe that that th that this is still reality. I'm just gonna start off by saying this: the Leafs lost the Nazem Kadri trade. They did. They lost the Nazem Kadri trade. Nazem Kadri scored with what, like a second left yesterday to defeat the St. Louis Blues. They, look at him in Colorado. What has Tyson Berry done in Toronto? I'm sorry. I'm not here to to rip on Tyson Berry or anything, but the amount of money he has lost in his contract year based on his play from this year with the Leafs is is. Unbelievable. I didn't believe Avalanche fans when they said that he's the right-handed Jake Gardner. And I I truly, this whole year, I'm, I've given him the benefit of the doubt. You know, new team, new system. I get that. But he has shown me that he is the right-handed Jake Gardner. Now, don't get me wrong. Jake Gardner wasn't that bad. He was made out to be way worse than he actually was. But he is not who we traded Nazem Kadri for. I didn't think that Alex Kerfoot would have been the best thing coming out of that trade. This game was a goaltending battle. Corpusalo was, uh, was on point, and Frederick Anderson was unreal. You could say whatever you want, that he shouldn't, he should have had that goal uh, that Columbus scored by Cam Atkinson, but you cannot waste a performance like that from Frederick Anderson. He kept the Leafs in this game at times. And Corpus, the only good chance, Steve Dangle said this, but and I'm not trying to say exactly what he's saying, but literally the only good chance I can remember is that amazing save by Corpusello on uh, Austin Matthews. And I, the, I, wa I watched the whole damn game. I, I can't believe I was that bored, or not that bored, I should say. I can't believe I was that disappointed and, and so laid back for a playoff game. Like, let's get, let's get into the game. First period. Um, let me just, the first, the first minute to two minutes were hard to watch. The Leafs' top two lines were getting hemmed in their own zone all game. There was a few chances Matthews' line had, but they were in their zone for most of the game. Tavares, Marner, and Mikheyev, that line was completely invisible. If they want to get past Columbus, let alone win a Stanley Cup, that line has to be better. It just does. That line has to be better. Ma Matthews, you know, he... I, I gotta say, he had a lot of... He had some scoring chances. That line, I was definitely more... I wouldn't say impressed, but I was okay with them. But that Tavares, Marner, and Mikheyev line has to be better. I honestly thought throughout this whole game that the Kerfoot, Caput, and Robertson line was the best line in, in last night's game. That was the best line every time they were on the ice. They, they, were playing, they were playing with what the Leafs need more of. Heart. Heart, grit. And we can say, again, Sheldon Keefe, Dubas, I know they love their numbers. I know they love their numbers. And I, and, I, and I agree with Dubas to an extent. But there's a point where you do need that grit and you do need that heart to come into, to come into play to win a Stanley Cup. I mean, the Leafs were getting bodied last night. I said this on my TikTok page. I think the Leafs have the, num no doubt in my mind, the advantage on offense. I think they have if one, if not the best offense in the NHL, especially on paper. And you don't see, just because of their depth, their star power, where was it last night? They just got shut out by Corpusello. Don't get me wrong, he had a good year, but 
The Leafs should not be getting shut out, especially after a pause where people are rusty and it's sloppy hockey. Like, come on. You traded Nazem Kadri, okay? Probably the guy that showed... Put all of his suspensions aside, showed the most heart being a Maple Leaf. Loved wearing the Maple Leaf, was the grittiest guy, got in the corners. There was times where his emotions got the best of him, but he showed what it's like to be a true hockey player and to play with the emotion and come to play every single night you step on the ice. He's not a Leaf anymore, so I gotta move past that. We all gotta move past that. But then we trade Trevor Moore for Kyle Clifford, which, okay, like, uh, Trevor Moore, okay, he's, he's not... I would rather have the grit, the grittiness of Kyle Clifford than having Trevor Moore. Again, Trevor Moore was a great player, but, you know, for what the Leafs need, Kyle Clifford seems like a great addition. Where was that fourth line? Did anyone notice that fourth line? Did anyone notice Kyle Clifford getting in those corners, laying body, doing something? Where's the depth that this team is supposed to be have the, the most insane depth. Where is that? I don't care if the Leafs win the Stanley Cup this year. I don't care if they get eliminated in two games from now because they're two games away from being eliminated. Morgan Riley needs a new defensive partner. He just does. He is the best defenseman the Leafs have. Probably one of the best defensemen in the league. And he is not able to play to his full ability because of his defensive partner. He has had Ron Hainsey, Cody Ceci, like, I'm sorry, but you can play, Cody Ceci, you can play on the third defensive pairing, sure. How are you playing Cody Ceci on the top pairing? And I understand because you need, you need guys to, you need guys to stay back for Tyson Berry. You need guys to stay back for Travis Dermott. Justin Hall, who we signed to an extension. What? Why? Where? What? What is? What about that is what the Leafs need on defense? We know the Leafs have the offensive defenseman. We do not have... Jake Muzzin is the only stay-at-home defenseman. Jake Muzzin is forced to jump in the play a lot of the times because of his defensive partner. And I'm sorry, you're like... If you're not, if you, if they don't fix their team defensively, like if they don't fix what they have on the back end, this team is not going to win a Stanley Cup. They still can. Trust me. I still have hope. Again, with this pause, if the, if the playoffs just started in March, this team would have been out in the first round 150%. I had no hope in this team. I'm sorry. This team is just nothing what I expected in, in October. But with this pause and teams not being, like, again, Boston just lost 4-1 to the Philadelphia Flyers, like, the President's Trophy winners. The, with this pause, teams are not what they were before the pause. Everyone is still getting back into shape. This is the time where the Leafs usually shine the most. This is basically playing playoff hockey in October. To have, to be shut out in game one of the Stanley Cup qualifiers. Look at the Canadians game. They did not waste a performance from Carey Price like that. They did not waste it. Pittsburgh dominated them at points. Pittsburgh should have won that game. But Carey Price kept them in it. And the Canadians did not, did not let that go to waste. The Canadians are up 1-0 against the Pittsburgh Penguins right now. The Pittsburgh Penguins are two games away from being eliminated. This isn't a best four out of seven. This is a three out of five. The Leafs are two games away from being eliminated after a five-month wait. The Leafs did not have a shot within the last six minutes and 21 seconds of the third period. That's not enough. That's not going to get it done, especially when you're down one goal. You know how the Columbus Blue Jackets play. You have all the film in the world. They are coached by the same guy that swept the Tampa Bay Lightning last year. The Leafs should win this series and they have everything. They should have, if they played this series back before the pause, I still think they should, they should win the series. But that is not going to come if the Tavares line is invisible, if the Matthews line isn't offensively producing the way that they are, the way that they should. 
and their depth isn't coming into play. I'm sorry, the Leafs are not going to win games playing a defensive playing a defensive battle. That's just the facts. They are not built like that. The Leafs are not going to win the, a Stanley Cup being forced to play defensive battles. They have to produce offensively. That's it. And we can go through the game. Cam Atkinson, uh, well played shot. Uh, sure, Freddie probably maybe should have had it. I don't care. Frederick Anderson was the Leafs MVP, kept the Leafs in the game. Um, they got to be better. I could go through the whole game, but I really don't think I have to. For the first two periods, it was a snooze fest. It was a defensive battle. Um, I'll give the Leafs credit in terms of... Uh, I can't say they played that bad defensively. They played pretty good defensively, keeping it 0-0 until... But still, getting scored in 70 seconds within the third period. You got to come out better than that. They played a good job. The, the defense played a good game defensively. But that's not what this team is built for. You can't waste a game like that from your goaltender, from playing that well defensively. Y you just can't get shut out in a game like that. Y these games in these qualifying rounds are way too important. If they lose again tomorrow, they're one game away from being eliminated. After all this wait, I don't know about you, me as a Leaf fan, I would be livid. But yeah, that was my recap for game one against the Columbus Blue Jackets at the Stanley Cup qualifiers. Wasn't really a recap. It was because there wasn't really much to recap. Um, yeah, that's, it is what it is. If you guys enjoyed, please like this video. If you want to see more recaps, then please subscribe. I will be recapping as many playoff games as I can. But as always, boys, keep your buckets on. It's a tough world out there. And I will see you guys in the next recap.